Hello folks, uh, what I want to share today is how to do an oil change in the Carbon Cub FX3. Um, when I first got my plane, um, me being a brand new aircraft owner and uh, learning maintenance or whatnot, um, one thing I had asked Cub Crafters for were just some basic videos to learn how to do basic maintenance tasks uh, from uh, tire, which I've uh, recently shown on my channel um, how to do oil changes, uh, whatnot. I also did the TAC Aero uh, week-long FX3 training course, and I corresponded with those folks afterwards that, hey, there might be some opportunity for you if you could uh, maybe give us a basic uh, aircraft ownership course for new aircraft owners or even owners of uh, the FX3, which is uh, maybe new to you as it was to me. Um, so I want to share this video for those of you that are experienced with this stuff. This video is not for you. Those of you that uh, have not done your own uh, oil change on an FX3, which uh, you certainly can do, um, new aircraft owners, then uh, this video is for you. All right, so uh, <clears throat> I just got to the aircraft, so I have not warmed it up. There are two options for warming it up. I can plug in the uh, preheater. I've got the Rife engine preheater on this engine, which is what I've done in the past. I'm actually going to take it out and run it for a while and uh, get the oil circulated. Um, and then I'm going to remove the top cowl and the right side gill or whatever you call this louver uh, thing here. So, uh, and then uh, I'm going to show you how everything hooks up. But one thing I want to point out here is these screws uh, for the top cowl that are in this corner, this side and the other side, are longer than the others. So make sure you don't uh, uh, confuse that. That was something I learned um, in the first oil change. Um, now, I'm going to show you some of the parts in uh, how to organize. Some people will take tape, uh, double like painter's tape, double side it, and just stick the screws on the side. I've had them drop off. Um, that's fine. Uh, but if you're going to go run after the oil change and do a leak check, then uh, you obviously don't want to have those screws on the side. So what I prefer, I mentioned this in a prior video, I like the grip mat, um, G-R-Y-P-M-A-T dot com grip mat. So uh, you can also use a uh, organizer, uh, such as fish and lure type organizer. So I'll keep the screws here. Uh, and keep organized anything I've got coming out. I've got a uh, oil filter uh, ready to go. You can do Tempest or Champion, I believe it's the other one. You can get the uh, Blackstone Laboratories oil analysis. Just go on their website and order a couple of them. And uh, it comes with the envelope, uh, prepaid postage and everything. And of course, you can put your credit card info on there and they'll charge you. Um, some of you may have heard of this uh, uh, oil filter pre-torque, should be at 17 foot-pounds. Um, I do not like this. I used this once and over-torqued the oil filter. I'd rather and prefer that what I use is my uh, torque wrench um, with a one-inch uh, fitting and take it to exactly 17 foot-pounds. You got your oil filter cutter tool and then your safety wiring and then you need a 3 8 inch um, ID uh, hose and of course a bucket to catch the oil. All right, uh, so I have run uh, the engine for a little bit, took it up to about 100 degrees and uh, removed the top cowl in the right side, uh, louver, gill, whatever you may want to call it. Um, now I'm going to this is for the routine uh, procedure. I'm actually going into condition inspection uh, from this, so uh, I can make it a lot easier on myself just dropping the bottom uh, cal, but uh, I wanna show you how this is done routinely. Now, the another question may come about is uh, when to change the oil. Uh, the rule of thumb out there is about 35 engine, 35 tack hours. <clears throat> um, if I run the engine hard, uh, doing high RPM, um, type stuff. Uh, I just monitor the oil. You know, if it looks like it's black, you know, getting a dark black, then I'll go at 25 hours, um, sometimes 30 hours. This uh, cycle has been pretty much uh, low RPM, uh, max fuel efficiency, just uh, droning 
uh, enjoying uh, uh, some flying, so I'm at 35 hours on the tack. Um, so up to you on your, your cycle. I believe the Lycoming guide is 50 hours, but people, from what I hear, uh, uh, 35 is the general rule of thumb. Uh, one other tool I forgot to mention in uh, prep is this, uh, well, that was close, this um, tube. Uh, Cub Crafters gives it to you, or should give it to you, with the del delivery of the plane, but if you're a second, third, fourth owner, you may not have this. It's a 3 8 inch tube cleaning brush. It is not a gun cleaning brush. It is, this end piece does not come off. It is stainless steel. Uh, Cub Crafter sells them for around 12, 15, 16, I don't know what it is. Uh, you can find them online as well. 3 8 inch tube cleaning brush. Uh, what else? All right, so let's take a look. Grab my light. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna hook up to. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the oil dipstick um, or you know you could actually unscrew it set it aside but what you want to do is create a vent and uh, but since the oil's coming out and we're going to be putting oil in I'm just going to remove the dipstick now when I observed and uh, learned got trained on my first oil change at Cub Crafters the 10 hour oil change uh, the guy there in the uh, repair shop he actually uh, Took a screwdriver, put a hole in the filter. Again, just uh, creating a vent up top. And uh, I haven't done that. It makes a little bit of a mess, but I'm also worried about some uh, anything that might be getting in. But I think the uh, dipstick out is enough of a vent. And yeah, we've got a, uh, you can see the blue uh, quick release. So what I'm going to do is feed the 3 8 inch tube up. Um, it's a little tight in here. And uh, be careful as that's tight if you just flew or ran it um, and then you're going to push up and rotate i think it's uh, counterclockwise but you'll figure it out and the oil will flow let it uh, completely drain and then uh, we'll go over the process of getting the oil filter off which is uh, the next task that's uh, worthy of discussion all right so pro tip since this muffler exhaust is, not muffler, but exhaust is hot, I uh, put a towel around it so I can get my paw in there. Push up quite hard and it is counterclockwise. So the oil is flowing. And uh, so now that we've got, uh, you know, midstream per se, I'm gonna take the sample uh, for Blackstone. You can see I use the drip pan uh, as a safety precaution. But uh, when I take the oil filter off, that's where the uh, oil filter is going to go. I'm going to put it in the drip pan. Uh, so let's talk about that real quick while the oil is coming out. So you can see the oil filter. And so the opening is to the bottom. And so the trick is uh, to put, some people put plastic shopping bags below it. I take a whole bunch of rags, shop towel type thing, <clears throat> paper towels, whatever. Put it under there get the oil filter off as fast as I can and get it uh, opening up to the top to try to keep the oil from coming out and making a mess because I do try to keep a pretty engine compartment keep it clean <clears throat> and also for leak checking you, you want it clean um, so the oil's coming out it's going to take some time and then uh, we'll get the oil filter off and we'll pick up after that okay I uh, got the oil filter off. And let me show you. Whoops, got a little oil there. Um, I did a little cleanup. I'll give myself a B plus on this one. I uh, had a little bit of spillage down there, but it uh, is what it is. New filter is ready. Do your documentation. Got your date, your tack, and your end number. I'm going to put some, uh, take some of the oil, uh, put it on the uh, gasket and then I will install the new filter torque to 17 foot pounds using my torque wrench and then I will safety wire it and I will show you when that's done all right let's take a look at the oil filter and the safety wiring now a friend of mine uh, now what I'm going to show you is safety wiring the oil filter has, there is a right way and a wrong way <clears throat> 
and safety wiring in general is an art and sometimes I don't get it right on the first time and I'll uh, take a couple times to do it but uh, this one uh, worked out a friend of mine went to observe a, an annual condition inspection and an IA did the oil filter uh, oil change and put the filter on and safety wired it and believe it or not the IA uh, safety wired it incorrectly so what I'm going to show you is why this is important <clears throat> by the way this little uh, four foot uh, ladder comes in handy picked it up at Lowe's <clears throat> helps get to these top screws uh, cleaning etc etc and by the way I haven't cleaned so don't look all right so you can see the safety wire attaches to this peg down here and then you're going to go to <clears throat> one of these spots and now if you just think about this what you don't want this oil filter to be able to do is to unscrew itself <clears throat> or, or work counterclockwise and end up having a leak so the IA um, in this example <coughs> I went to the wrong side so you can see I'm on this side so that the filter cannot spin uh, counterclockwise so uh, twisted it up went through twisted it again trimmed it <clears throat> and uh, that's that so um, again do another cleaning because i'm going to do a run <coughs> for a leak check <coughs> check everything uh, you can see the uh, quick drain is stowed i do keep the uh, drip pan underneath so now it's time to put oil in so seven quarts is what's going to go in and uh so we um I'm trying to get this thing so i can see what we're looking at here um the full level that we're looking for is six quarts so seven quarts will go in between the oil filter and whatnot it uh um it's going to use that additional quart and then uh as the placard says on the oil fill door when we get down to five and a half we add a quart so i typically add about a quart every 10 to 15 hours oh i want to show you oh now the funnel this is the funnel uh, a friend of mine used i actually had a round you know a funnel with a uh, flexible i think i threw it away did not have much success but this funnel type multi-purpose funnel but it has this angle and uh really works well since your uh, fill is at an angle all right for this tube let me get my light see if you can uh, see in here with me I'm just gonna point the camera up in there with some light and hopefully you can see in there but there is it's kind of like a snake um, with their breathing or whatever the hell it is but um <clears throat> there's a tube in there three eighths inch uh, breather tube i believe it's called and different rules of thumb out there as far as when to clean it some say every oil change and no it needs to be every five to ten hours the thing just blocks and i guess it can blow out a gasket or something like that in the engine i don't know uh more frequent than than not so that's uh, just a little demo of how I change the oil. If you see anything I did wrong or have any suggestions, please help me. I'm always learning. But uh, hopefully this will show you that uh, the oil change is not that difficult. But if you're not comfortable, don't. <clears throat> All right. Oil change is complete. I need to check the level. I just did a run. I did a uh, leak check. Everything looks good. Did a little cleanup. One final tip I want to share. And this is just uh, good keeping, taking good care of this plane, super expensive. And I picked this up at Cub Crafters and, and uh, then Tack Arrow afterwards, but I got this uh, carpeting material. When you take your cowl off, this is the upper cowl, uh, and I bought this little workbench at uh, Amazon. It's something so I can uh, have a vise for uh, helps with the oil filter, cutting it open for inspection but you don't want to set your cowl on something like this uh um flooring this has the uh material on top of the concrete 
end up chipping your paint and then you're you're hosed so try to take good care of this uh prized possession and um all right so i'm going to check the oil and that completes it and then i go into condition inspection so everything comes off and uh checking everything out and following the checklist and the amm so hope this helped you out